Kennedy. Number two, in Dealey Plaza, there's an obelisk, a monument commemorating the location of the first Masonic temple in the state of Texas. Dealey Plaza is on the 33rd parallel, which is one of the sacred numbers in Freemasonry. He was assassinated in a manner that assured the greatest flow of blood, which is called blood atonement, which was practiced by Freemasonry in the early days and supposedly is, is not practiced now. But in reality is, is the method of choice of execution, trial and execution by Freemasons. The Bilderberg group that orders his execution is the Supreme World Council of Freemasonry and consists of 39 permanent members, which is three times 13, which is also the exact number of men who signed the Constitution. 39. You see, our forefathers were also members of this secret group, and this country was founded to bring about the New World Order. And it's all in the great seal of the United States, which was, and that, the design of the great seal was made law in 1782. Uh, it's just absolutely incredible that the American people don't understand that groups of men don't get together and meet in secret and take blood oaths of, which say that uh, they can be cut open and their heart ripped out of their body and their intestines scattered over the floor if they talk about the secrets. That's not a benevolent fraternity. That's a dangerous group of men. Grown men don't play games like that. They're serious. Um, it's the secret societies who are who are bringing about the New World Order, they're the ones who killed John F. Kennedy. There's nothing wrong with our Constitution or our Bill of Rights, but Americans are going to be convinced that our government sucks. And that's what, what all this stuff is all about. So at the beginning, the, the founders of this country actually did create what was a, I, I guess you could say, an above board, good, good government basis, basis for a good oh, yes. government. They gave us every tool to ensure the success but it was an experiment, you see, because man had always claimed that he could rule himself, but had never been allowed to do that. Even in ancient Rome, they call it a democracy. The man didn't rule himself. He was ruled by other people who made man think he was ruling himself. But the truth was, a Roman centurion could march down the street and grab anybody they wanted to and make you do whatever they wanted to or just execute you on the spot. And that was the truth of the matter. Those weren't free people. In the history of the world, there had never been a people who were truly free or who truly ruled themselves until the United States of America was created as a republic by which we ruled ourselves through elected representatives whom we sent to the state house, either in the states or, or to Congress, um, to do it. They also gave us every tool by which we would destroy ourselves if we weren't capable of doing it. The United States and France... The revolution in this country and the revolution in France were created to bring about governments which would function as the antithesis to the kings and queens of the world and cause them to topple off their thrones. It also gave man a chance to prove once and for all whether he could rule himself or not. And if he could, fine, that would be the new world order. If he couldn't, they built the tools into the Constitution to allow them to take it away from us. And those tools are the creation of the federal democracy within the boundaries of Washington, D.C., and the right to contract, through which if we were irresponsible, we would contract to receive rights from that federal democracy and thus in return give up our freedom. And that's exactly what's happening. It's exactly what we've done. John F. Kennedy was short-circuiting the New World Order. He had ordered the printing of constitutional money, United States notes, which would have uh, destroyed the Federal Reserve, which is not an agency of the United States government. It's a private corporation owned and operated by the world bankers, controlled by the Illuminati. And its purpose was to destroy the middle class in this country and thus our economy and throw us at the mercy of the New World Order. And we see this unfolding now. You see it unfolding now. You are seeing, and I predicted this well in advance, you are seeing the destruction of the economy of the United States. And it will continue. It will not get better. It's downhill from here on out. Unless we nationalize the Federal Reserve, lock up the criminals who own it, 
cancel the debt, which will then bankrupt the Illuminati, which is exactly what we ought to do, print constitutional money, which cannot be usurped, which cannot lead to our destruction, and go back to, to, to what we're supposed to do, and quit contracting for benefits. We're escaping from the laws of nature, and there's a terrible consequence for that. Mm -hmm. Terrible consequence. Uh, we have to function within the laws of nature. You can't contract for somebody else to keep you alive. You have to be responsible within your life to keep yourself alive. Mm -hmm. And if you can't do it, then you have to die. That's the law of nature. You see. Uh, Kennedy also did a lot of other things. I mean, he was a believer in the Bible. These men who are bringing about the New World Order don't believe in the God of the Bible. They believe in the God of light, Lucifer, the angel of light, who was flung down to the earth and became the Lord of the world. That's their God. That's why everything they do is, is goes against um, what people know to be the right thing to do. They believe that man was held prisoner by a vindictive, cruel God named Jehovah in the Garden of Eden. And that Lucifer, through his agent Satan, set man free from the bonds of ignorance to which he was chained to the Garden of Eden, and thus brought the gift of intellect, wisdom, to man, and thus is the true benevolent God. And man, with his intellect and his wisdom and his knowledge, will create technology which will elevate man to the position of God. And all this is allegorical. Don't take the, the story literally, you see, because it's all allegorical. They believe that intellect, reason, is the light, mm -hmm. is the true God, is what makes man God. And I'm not going to debate the, 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 the right or wrongness of that, because who the hell knows? <laughs> but I can tell you that that uh, they pervert whatever it is that might be divine about their philosophy mm -hmm. by becoming what they profess they to, want destroy. to destroy. Yes. Uh, and so, in their zeal to bring about the New World Order, uh, they destroyed the political will of the nation when they assassinated John F. Kennedy, which has furthered their goal because it made a lot of people feel so helpless right. that, God, if they can kill the president, who am I? You know, what, what can I do? I'm just one lonely, helpless person. So they quit voting. They abdicated their power. And, of course, through agents like Robert Groden and, and many others, uh, Oliver Stone, they're being convinced that our government sucks, that our government is the problem, that the Constitution doesn't work, Plain. that the Bill of Rights aren't real. We're playing right into their hands, in other words. We're playing right into their hands because there's nothing wrong with the Constitution or the Bill of Rights or our government. The you see, it's been infiltrated. And from within, they are eating at the heart of this nation like a cancer, this secret society. They are destroying it. They are subverting it. Our Constitution has not been allowed to work since 1945 and maybe even earlier. And they have been working behind the scenes to bring about a one-world totalitarian socialist government with the Communist Manifesto as its platform through the United Nations, which was created by this nation from an older organization called the League of Nations, which was the original foundation. And uh, at the highest levels of our government, the Constitution's already been scrapped, and they are working under the aegis of the UN Participation Act and the United Nations Charter. Which says what? Which says that there are no rights, there are only what you, what you call uh, privileges. And privileges can be granted or taken away at will by the state. Quite frightening scenario. It's a very frightening scenario and people better wake up to the fact uh, that unless they wake up and do something about it now, there's only going to be one alternative. And that's either take up arms, restore the Constitution, and the blood will run in the streets of America, or reach down and put the shackles around your own feet and march off into slavery peacefully. The guy you wanted to marry or something yeah. like that. Uh, you're, you're playing right into their hands. 
you know, they made it so impossible for another Abraham Lincoln to get elected to the office of president that it's a wonder that, that, that we even have a chance at all. We need to send people to Congress and to government who are going to clean house, kick all the members of secret societies out of the bureaucracy, lock them up, try them for treason, because they are traitors. So one thing that may help is term limitations. We must have term limitations, and it must be only one term. And forget all this nonsense that anybody goes to Washington don't know what's happening. They don't know what's happening simply because they haven't taken the time as citizens to understand how our government works before they ever go to Washington. You see, it should be a process that starts in infancy. It works its way up, and, and everybody should be taking part in the government. Now, if someone came in uh, uh, to office with this kind of knowledge and with this kind of intent to, to really pu push these people out, would they not be eliminated immediately? Not if they had the people behind them, because what the people would do in one fell swoop, in one election, would elect people who have never served in government before, kick the incumbents out, send citizens to Washington. And here's the way it has to be done. You know right now you don't even pay your congressman. You know who pays your congressman? The federal democracy of the District of Columbia. The federal government pays your congressman who's supposed to be representing your state and you. The federal government is a foreign country to your state. Why should he represent you? Not only that, but he goes, he moves to Washington, D.C. He maintains a residence here, but he doesn't live here. And as long as you re-elect him, he continues to live in Washington, D.C. Forever, if you keep re-electing him. So they lose all touch with what's back here. They're paid by a foreign government, the federal government. They're not paid by the sovereign state of Georgia mm -hmm. or by you. They have to be paid by you. And they have to live here. They can't move to Washington, D.C. They go to Washington, D.C. for one term. Okay? One term only. When that term's up, they have to come back. And you don't pay them exorbitant funds. You pay them just enough to live on comfortably while they're there. Mm -hmm. No fancy giant cocktail parties, none of this crap. And you take care of their family. See, they don't take their family either. That's the other clue. They leave their family here, where they live. Mm -hmm. You, the people of Georgia, take care of their family and their business or their farm or whatever it is they have while they're gone. Now do you think they have a vested interest in representing you? They sure would under those conditions. Yeah. But under the conditions they, have, they, they go under now, they have no interest whatsoever mm. in taking care of you. Now let's look at the current... They're taking <coughs> care of themselves. The current uh, crop of presidential candidates. Is there anybody even running that represents something that we're talking about here? No, all of them are New World people. Songus, in, in, his, in his book, he, even uh, everything that he, he's written touts the New World Order. All of it, right for Songus' literature. They, they, You're going to see New World Order, New World Order, New World Order, New World Order. Clinton, the governor of Georgia, was selected in 1991 well, go by the Arkansas. Bilderberg, or excuse me, gov governor of uh, Arkansas, was selected in uh, 1991 uh, by the Bilderberg Group in Baden-Baden, Germany, to be the new president of the United States. Remember what happened to Gary Hart? What did he do? He went out on a boat with a woman who wasn't his wife, and he was destroyed. Look at Clinton. What's happened to him? Nothing. The press is on his side. They're helping the guy. You know why? because he was chosen by the people who own the press to be the next president of the United States. Now, I don't know if he will be or not. That's up to the American people. Mm -hmm. But if they get their way, he will be. Bush? Bush is one of the most heinous criminals that's ever walked on the face of the earth. Bush is the man who's been a CIA agent since his college days. He's a member of the Skull and Bones, the Russell Trust. He was initiated in a, in a casket with a ribbon tied around his genitalia. Which, which symbolizes that he's a priest in the Temple of Isis. A pagan, this guy. This man is a member of the mystery schools. Well, he has the outward appearance of a good uh, Christian, church-going Christian, no? They do whatever they have to to be approved by the people, but in secret, they're not at all. This is a man who practices pagan religious rituals, magic. Doesn't matter what you think of all these things. I'm just telling you, this is what he does in secret. Mm -hmm. He is the man who, when he was chief executive officer, when he was president of the offshore division of Zapata Oil, 
organized and began the first large-scale drug smuggling operations into this country. George Bush is the one responsible for the drugs on the streets. And the war against drugs is not a war against drugs, it's a war against the Bill of Rights. And we've already lost the Fourth Amendment in this war. That's true. And we're going to lose everything else. You watch on, it amazes me, people watch on Saturday night, cops, top cops, tough cops, 911. All of these stories that are glorifying the police state and they're falling right into the manipulation as they watch police with no search warrant, with no court order, break down people's doors, tear out their walls, rip open their mattresses. All in the name of the war on drugs. Pretty sneaky. It's pretty sneaky, all right. You see them stop people in the streets and the guy's got $400 in his pocket. They don't press, press any charges. They didn't even have any reasonable suspicion to stop the person and search him. And what do they do? They take their money. And they don't give it back. And America's watching this. And the stupid idiots, yes you, you, <laughs> stupid idiots, you sit there and watch it, not realizing that when you take away that man's freedom, you've also taken away your own. You see, because they can do the same thing to you. Just because you talk a way that they don't like you talking, or because you wear red shoes and they don't like red shoes, they can do the same thing to you. And under the new law, without a court order, without a search warrant, they can break down your door, they can rip open your mattresses, your couches, your walls, they can trash your house. All in the name of the war on drugs. And let's say they don't like the color of your shoes. All they have to do is drop a little pouch of cocaine in your living room, behind your couch, and find it and say, aha, you're a drug dealer. What happens then? Now they can confiscate your house, all your possessions, all your property, all your bank accounts, all your cars, boats, vacation cottages, whatever you have, and they can auction it off within 24 hours without ever even pressing charges against you. Without a court order, without due process, without just comp uh, compensation, and there's not a damn thing that you can do about it. Not a damn thing. At least right now. At least right now. And the reason you can't do a damn thing about it is because you're the one who brought it about through your stupidity. You're mentally crippled. You're operating from a position of ignorance, apathy, abdication, irresponsibility. And we're losing our country, our freedoms, everything. Now these are these are strong accusations of the American public. What what do you hope to accomplish by angering the very audience that you want to watch and listen to you? Go prove me wrong. Go make me the idiot. In so doing, you're going to find out what the truth is, and maybe you'll wake your ass <laughs> up. <laughs> and if you do, maybe we can save our country. Because I don't really care at this point whether you get mad at me or not. My country's disappearing. My freedoms are disappearing. My daughter's going to live as a slave in the New World Order if you people don't wake up and help me. So, if I had a two-by-four, literally, I would smack you upside the head with it. I don't care if you get mad at me. It's beyond that state. You know, I'm willing to put my life on the line. Why would I care if you get mad at me? Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, people say, well, don't you feel threatened? Don't you feel like your life is in danger? Are you kidding? You're the people who sent your sons and daughters to fight an, an illegal, immoral, unjustified war in the Middle East. And that didn't bother you a bit that they might have got killed over there? And you're worried that I might get hurt or killed? Right here, really defending my country? Mm. Really fighting in the defense of the Constitution? Right. You brought up the Persian Gulf War. That's something that's still on a lot of people's minds. Based on what you're saying, should what be. was the they, reason for that war? They should feel really guilty. They should re feel really bad about that. I mean, what about a Saddam Hussein that everyone seems to agree is, is, you know, the evil man here that we had the right to go in and punish, destroy, or whatever? Well, it's funny that the man who purported to want to destroy Saddam Hussein was the man who really built Saddam Hussein when he was in the Central Intelligence Agency. We have been building up Saddam Hussein's arsenal. His technology comes from us in the Soviet Union. We built him up to create that war. We did it for a purpose, and the purpose was 
Look at this. If George Bush knew what he was doing, how come he didn't know what he was doing? Here's what he said. We've got to send troops to the Middle East because we can't afford to pay $26 a barrel for oil. That's on tape. Next he comes out and he says, no, it's not about the price of oil. It's because Saddam Hussein's not going to stop at Kuwait. He's going to go into Saudi Arabia, and those are our friends, our buddies. So we've got to go defend Saudi Arabia. And then James Baker says in a press conference, nope, it's not about Saudi Arabia. It's not about $26 a barrel for oil. It's about jobs. Folks, we're going to get you a job, and to do it, we're willing to kill your sons and daughters. Yes, sir, we'll send them off to get killed so that you can have a job. Prosperity. That's what it's all about. Well, what was the actual scenario if we hadn't have gone in? What, well, what? see, that's not the end of it yet. Okay. Then George Bush comes out and says, whoa, the White House is flooded for telegrams. They don't want their sons and daughters to get killed for a job. It's not about jobs. It's about naked aggression. Yes, sir, there's a little Hitler over there called Saddam Hussein. Yeah, and we're going to go destroy him because the world doesn't need another Hitler. Never mind Pinochet in Chile, who's another Hitler. Never mind all the other Hitlers in the well, world. Was that Never about, mind Tiananmen Square. Well, then you know, then people would say, well, the American government's not interested in that because money is not in, in uh, you know, it's the oil here. We're talking about money. No. So you're saying it's not even that. No. They've been planning this war for years. In fact, Arco Press wrote a book about it. The name of the book is Rapid Deployment Forces. It was published in 1985. It names Kuwait as the country. It talks about Operation Bright Star, where they've been practicing the war every year since the early 80s, sending troops over there, practicing the war, liberating Kuwait. It's even named in the book. The whole thing was spelled out years ago. What it was all about was to establish the New World Order. You see, because for the first time in the history of the world, it's established the legal international precedent of the, the United, United Nations could pass a resolution and send its police force to enforce that resolution and that the member nations would have to pay for that action. And George Bush said it very clearly, but nobody was listening, when he said, no longer will any nation stand against a world united. And with that action, he established the legal foundation in international law that the United Nations is now legally and overtly the one world government and that the United States military forces and the other forces that were sent by other countries were established as the one world police force under the United Nations. Have you seen the new Air Force uniforms yet? Nowhere on them does it say United States or US. They are United Nations uniforms. Go look at them. Mm. What role um, in the Middle East, again, does Israel play in this? Israel was created as the instrument to bring about the Battle of Armageddon and the fulfillment of prophecy, a war that will be so terrible, where nuclear weapons will be used, so that the American citizens and the other people in the world will get down on their knees and beg for no more war. And what is the answer to that? They're going to be told the only way we can guarantee no more war is if we destroy the sovereignty of nations and we come together as one humanity in a one world government. Right. Now I'm telling you, unless the American people wake up and stop it, starting in about 1996, the Battle of Armageddon will become a reality. And the Not U because two nations got mad at each other and decided to fight, and that's why Saddam Hussein was not destroyed. He will be the instrument that will bring that to pass. Right. Yeah, they purposely Saddam did Hussein, not go in and do that. Saddam Hussein will be portrayed as the Antichrist. Babylon is in Iraq. Mm -hmm. Read the book of Revelations. Whether you believe in the book or not, read it because the They're men who are it. bringing this about are using it as their script. Well, the UN did indeed charter Israel as a, as a sovereign nation. They were the ones who created this state. That is correct. It was really created by Great Britain and the United States, with the United States being the major major well, instigate. Okay, and the, the Jewish people were then being manipulated into believing it was for some other reason. That's correct. They've always been manipulated. And I get people who still come to me all the time and say, Bill, you're all wrong, it's the Jews. The Jews are subverting the world. Man, it's not the Jews, it's not the Catholics, it's not the blacks. 
It's these men who belong to the ancient mystery schools, who meet in secret and decide the fate of the world. And they belong to all different races and all different nationalities and all different religions to the public point of view. But in secret, it's a different story. How about the European community? Here seems, based on your theory, another uh, group of sovereign nations coming together to form one government. The European community, the EEC, was created by the Central Intelligence Agency working through a lodge in Italy called the P2 Lodge. Propaganda 2 is the name of it, which is the intelligence arm of the Vatican. And Prince Barnard, who is the leader of the secret World Council that controls these secret societies around the world, called the Bilderberg Group. And that's the truth of the matter. Mm. And, uh, well, during its creation, uh, they, they, they just threw out Margaret Thatcher. She was really opposing this. Yes, she was, and that's why she got ousted. Okay. So did the Shah of Iran. So did Marcos. Anyone who opposes it gets ousted. That wasn't an overthrow of Marcos by the people in the Philippines. It was organized, instigated, and carried out by agents of the Central Intelligence Agency and the KGB. The overthrow of the Shah of Iran, our intelligence community, is trying to tell us they didn't know anything about it. They didn't know what was happening. Bullshit. They organized it. They instigated it. They are the ones who caused it to come to pass. Mm -hmm. You see, because we didn't have a national security agency or a central intelligence agency before the UN Participation Act was signed. And these organizations were created to bring about the one world government, the new world order. And it had to be done in a manner that the people would not know that it was being done. And the only way they could do that was hide it behind the veil of national security. And the Cold War was a manipulation maintained to bleed the people of tax dollars to fund the creation of the police force of the New World Order, which is the Army, Navy, and Air Force and Marines of the United States and the Soviet Union. And the people didn't rise up in the Soviet Union and overthrow communism. It came from the top down because it had to be done. There has to be a bringing to the same level of all the peoples of the world to well, approximately the same political viewpoint so there's not big disparity in order to be able to justify the merger of all these countries together. Well, who now is ruling the forces of the former Soviet Union? You have Yeltsin in now. As Gorbachev went, supposedly went down, but we're not sure about that. Well, let me tell you this. From the beginning, there was never any war between the United States and the Soviet Union. It was created by those at the top to fund the New World Order and the New World Order's police force. At the highest level of all countries, they all belong to the same club. And we, the people, sit back and we watch this grand drama which is being played out for our benefit, mm -hmm. not theirs. If it wasn't for us, they wouldn't even have to do any of this. But you see, they just can't come out and destroy all of us because they need slaves. They need people to make their shoes and make their cars and mine the ore. They need worker bees, and that's what we are. In the New World Order, we will be the worker bees, the slaves. So the Orwellian view of the vision of the future wasn't too far off based on this scenario. George Orwell was just like me. He was a low-level member of British intelligence who was appointed to a position high enough where he saw the same documents that I saw. And he tried to warn the world just like I'm trying to warn the world, only he wasn't willing to take the risk that I'm willing to take. So he wrote it in a book called 1984 and spelled out exactly what's coming as a warning to the people of the world, as a work of fiction. But you notice that that work of fiction really stirred people up because they knew that it wasn't fiction. In their heart of hearts, everyone who's read that book knows that it's coming. But it's a possibility. Most people won't recognize it overtly or publicly because then if they recognize it, they have to be responsible to do something about it. And that's what every one of you have been resisting all your life, is being responsible to do something about it, to get involved. That's why you'll walk away 
from a girl being raped on the street by a gang of thugs rather than go and try to help her. And I'm not talking to all of you. I know there's some of you out there just like me. But most of you are just exactly what I've just described. Most people are no better than animals who do not have intelligence because they don't use their intelligence. And to these men who control things behind the scenes, mm -hmm. you are stakes on the table by choice and consent and will always be ruled and manipulated and enslaved by people who do use their brains. Mm. As long as we're debunking some myths, because it's putting pieces of this puzzle together, I think, for a lot of people that may be watching. Um, the, the hostage situation in Iran that, threw, that got Carter out of office, is this another orchestration? And if so, how does it fit into the... October surprise is no myth. There was a deal made. There was a deal made at the highest levels to keep the hostages until after Reagan was elected. Do you really believe that it was an accident, that it was a coincidence, that 30 minutes after Ronald Reagan was sworn in, took his oath of office, the hostages were released? Did they want Carter out? Are you really out? that naive? I can't believe it. <laughs> did, did they want Carter out? Yes, they wanted Carter out. They wanted Carter out. He wouldn't play the, the, by the rules? I don't know why they wanted him out, but they wanted him out. Carter was ineffective. He did not have the support of all the American people. Um, they need people who can manipulate the American people so that they have their support. My message is to you is don't support anybody unless they're doing what we know to be right. Don't believe them. Don't fall for the manipulations. Double check everything they say. <laughs> And that means you can't rely on the media as it is today either. Oh, of course not. All the media in this country, radio, television, and print, is all owned by five corporations. All of these corporations that own the media are owned and controlled, and members of the Council on Foreign Relations sit on their board of directors. Can you name those five corporations? Is that... Yeah, not off the top of my head. Okay. I, I could try, but I don't want to take a chance on being uh, inaccurate. But you can trace that yourself. Okay. Remember, if you go down and you trace the ownership of a station or a newspaper and you get to a corporation, remember that somebody owns that corporation and it's usually another corporation. But when you, when you trace the interlocking of all these things, when you get to the top, there's five. And all journalists know that there's some things you don't write about and you don't talk about because you'll lose your job. And that's where the control is. And that's why they pay anchormen like Dan Rather $2 million a year. Because he doesn't question them. He knows that if he goes against them, he's going to lose $2 million a year. Do you think a man that looks pretty and sits in front of a TV camera for the 6 o'clock news is worth $2 million a year? No way. I don't care how long he works and I don't care what he does. There is no job worth $2 million a year. That's why they pay athletes these fantastic salaries. I was listening to the radio the other day. They just contracted to pay one, one player on one team $6 million a year. Can you believe this? And why is that? It's the Roman circus. What does the emperor do when the people become restive and when the people are asking questions and when the people don't like the policies of the emperor? He sends them to the circus. He creates a circus. He builds a giant coliseum. And he begins to throw the Christians to the lions. And he has great chariot races and football games and basketball games, all to keep the idiots preoccupied with things that don't mean anything in the scheme of the entire world so that they don't have the time to learn what the truth is, so they don't ever get smart enough to learn how they're being manipulated. So they don't ever question the emperor. That's why they pay a player on a football team or a baseball team a million or two million or three million dollars a year. It is the Roman circus. I know men who don't know anything in the world except who plays third base for the Mets. And they think that's a great accomplishment. And they meet and pat each other on the back and bond and go have cocktails and talk about what this guy that plays third base for the Mets did in last night's game. It's sad. It's really sad.
is there any room in in uh, in a kind of society where these manipulations are not taking place for this type of entertainment or any type of entertainment at all? If people understand that a game is a game, if people understand that nobody, nobody, no matter what they do, is worth paying two or three million dollars a year for, people should be able to get rich if they want to. Mm -hmm by the sweat of their individual labor, okay? By going on and doing something for the world. Mm -hmm. Not by taking people's minds away from the emperor. It's a game. Football's a game. Football's a game. But let me tell you something. When 150 of the most powerful men and women in the world can meet in secret in Baden-Baden, Germany, and plot the fate of billions and nobody even cares about it but six football players go to lunch together and it's in the headlines across the country you have a reflection of the society in which that exists and it is a sick sick society that it's doomed to self-destruction so based on that scenario there's some truth into what these these men are looking at absolutely and that's what makes me so sick is that I'm trying to wake up a people who on a daily basis are proving the ones that I'm warning them about to be right. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it, so that even though a minority, there are people out there that you recognize are awake to this, if they don't do something about it, they will lose that ability to be free in that way. That's correct. Whether they might think, well, I don't need to worry about it because I know what I know and I'm fine. That's it right. doesn't work that way. There's yes. a connection here to everything. That is correct. That is absolutely correct. A nation of people who are willing to send their sons and daughters that they profess that they love to a foreign country to die and they use the excuse to themselves that they're sending them off to defend our country and they know damn well that's a lie are doomed. Hmm. It's, it's funny, there's a parable, uh, you said Ben Franklin earlier was even a part of this. Yes. Um, a parable of Ben Franklin, I, I don't know if you're familiar with it, he paid too much for the whistle. He came up when he was a young boy. Are you familiar mm -hmm. with that parable? No, go ahead. Uh, where, he, when he was a young boy, he was given an allowance, and, you know, it was, it was a decent amount of allowance, and he was going to the, to the store to get a toy. You know, he was very excited about that, and along the way, he met some boys who had this whistle, you know, and he, and he saw that, and he saw the little boys blowing this whistle, and he thought, wow, the greatest whistle, I, this is the greatest toy, he really wanted this thing. Mm -hmm. So without asking, he gave all his money away, you know, to these boys for this whistle, and he went home, and, and sure enough, he got very bored with it, and he had no more money to buy something that was really, you know, worthwhile to him. Sure. And so from that point on, he had a saying that said, you know, don't pay too much for the whistle. And I think somehow that relates here. He's also the one, when the Constitutional Convention was finished, when they, when they wrote the Constitution and signed it, when it had been signed, he walked out the doors. Someone outside, I forget who it was, I believe it was a reporter for one of the newspapers in the 13 colonies, asked him, he said, what have you wrought, Ben? Ben looked at him and he said, a republic, if you can keep it. He knew. He did. Hmm. And that's a good place to end. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> that's a great ending.